to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We are just uh, a few seconds away um, to start our Wednesday night Bible study. And I truly give God all of the honor and all of the praise do unto his name he is worthy to be praised he is worthy to be adored and so we thank God for him wholeheartedly for being who he is in our life praise the Lord praise the Lord God is worthy he is faithful he is just to do what he says he is going to do we're just a few seconds away and I pray that you are prepared for Bible study on tonight as we're going to talk about praying the will of God uh, and so I hope that you have your pen and paper ready because we have a, a couple of scriptures that we're going to cover on tonight's Bible study as we talk about praying the will of God. And the question is, is do we know if we are in fact praying the will of God? And so we're going to explore some scripture text that's going to lead us in that path of praying the will of God. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord, everybody. Just taking care of a few technical things here, and then we're going to get started. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. So before we even go into Bible study, before we even begin to um, touch the Word of God in Bible study on tonight, I'd like to go into just uh, a, a moment of praise and exhortation just to give God all of the praise and honor because he is do that he is God and he is God alone and there is none other besides him upon this earth so father we just thank you one more time we thank you for your grace and mercy we thank you for your love and kindness and your tender mercy we thank you father God because what you have done upon this earth today you said in all things give thanks unto the Lord and so in all things we give thanks unto you it may not have been the way we thought it should have been it may not have happened the way we thought it should have happened but God you know and what you are looking from from us Lord God is our reaction and our reaction is that we give you thanks our reaction is that we just say thank you Lord God because it could have been a whole lot worse it could have been something else and so Lord God we thank you oh God we thank you and we magnify your name we bless you Lord God we give you all of the glory and all of the praise due unto you in Jesus name amen amen have you ever just got that level of praise in your spirit that you say you know what it it in all things give thanks because that is scripture in all things give thanks it might not have panned out the way we expected it the door might not have opened today guess what delay is not a denial what we have to come into the reality of is we give thanks in all things knowing that it's going to turn around for our good for them who love him for those who are called according to his purpose praise the lord praise the lord once again we give honor unto christ who is our life and we honor the overseer of faith outreach deliverance church bridgeton new jersey we honor the pastor of the local assembly dr lillian c allen we honor apostle wilson pastor wilson we honor all of those who uh, make up the body of Christ in this local assembly and we definitely honor each and every one of you as you can see we are uh, doing virtual Bible study again tonight 
And so I pray that you are ready. I pray that you are prepared for what God is going to share on tonight through the Holy Spirit. All right, so let's get us started. Amen. We are going to start with our scriptures for every day. And then we're going to read the seven works of grace. And from there, we're going to go into our study, praying the will of God. And once again, the question is, how do I know if I am praying the will of God? I need to know if that is what I am doing. And if I'm not praying the will of God, then guess what? I need to make some changes in my prayer life. Wisdom and knowledge belongs to you Colossians 1 9 through 10 for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God now before I go any further that's a prayer and so Colossians 1 9 through 10 is actually a prayer and so when we're talking tonight about praying the will of God this is the will of God so we'll put that in your notes Colossians 1 9 through 10 Ephesians 1 17 through 18 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the Saints that's a prayer also Isaiah 11 and 2 and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord be filled with God's fullness Ephesians 3 17 through 19 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God that is a prayer also Colossians 2 8 through 10 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ for in him dwelled all the fullness of the Godhead body and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power Acts 1 and 8 but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth expect a move of God suddenly Romans 8 and 11 but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal natural earthly bodies through his spirit who dwells in you please note this is talking about your body that you have now not the one you're going to receive one day in heaven allow the Lord to impart his life into you by placing faith in his word begin to praise him for this promise amen the seven works of grace your bill of rights in Christ repentance atonement sorrow what this means is a sorrow or regret for what one has done or left undone conversion transformed change to be changed from one state of condition to another from the controlling power of Satan unto God justification validation legalization an act of obedience on the believers part in expressing their faith towards God sanctification consecration purification this means to be set apart for a scarce holy purpose baptism of the Holy Spirit beginning 
This means by him we know that we have met conditions laid down by God for salvation and that our acts of saving faith have been honored. Redemption, liberation, deliverance, freedom. The act of redeeming or giving back to the rightful owners their loss, which Christ purposed for coming into the world. Perfection, excellence, faultliness and right standing for in the spirits of just men are made perfect amen all right so today and and for the past couple of weeks we have been talking about um we've been talking about prayer and what does that mean um we want to dive in into asking a very very important question am i praying the will of god Am I praying the will of God? So I, I we're going to go over some scripture text. So please have your, your pens and your paper ready. I can tell you that uh, we are first going to uh, take a look at 1 Corinthians 10 and 31. 1 Corinthians 10 31. We're going to look there first. And I want to remind you that it is the will of God that we believe that he gave his son, his only begotten son, for salvation. It is God's desire. It was his will. It is his will that we have eternal life. And that eternal life is given through his son. Jesus Christ and whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life that is the will that's the will of God now man and when I say man that is woman too uh, in God there is neither male nor female there is no respect of person our highest aim should be to bring glory to God and that's why we're going to take a look at 1st Corinthians the 10th chapter and the 31st verse it says whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatever ye do do all to the glory of God and so whatever we do this means the main object of the believers life is to please God and promote his glory thus what cannot be done for God's glory, meaning honor and thanksgiving to him as our Lord, creator and redeemer, should not be done at all. And so if we're doing something, if it is not to honor God as believers, we should not be doing it. And what I mean by that is if you are feeding the hungry, if it is not to glorify God, if it does not bring him honor, we should not be doing it. Don't do it just because, oh, I have a good heart, I'm a good person. Let it mean something. Do it unto the glory of God. Do not do it for recognition or for someone to just say, oh, look what I did. Mm -mm. That's the wrong motive. That's the wrong intention. But if we're going to do something and we're going to attach the name of our Lord and Savior to it, let it be for his glory not so that we can be seen and recognized and somebody can come and pat us on the back that is the wrong motive so make sure that all that we do let it be to the glory of god and that should be our highest aim this includes praying according to his will first we must ask for wisdom let's first ask for wisdom Let's take a look at a scripture text, and it is a prayer. It's instructing us how to pray and ask for wisdom. James, the first chapter, and the fifth verse. That's James, the first chapter, and the fifth verse. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally 
and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. And so if we lack wisdom, Solomon, when he came into uh, being king in the Old Testament, he didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for materialistic things. What he asked for was wisdom on how to lead God's people. And so we should ask for wisdom. You do not have to be in a leadership role to ask for wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Knowing how to maneuver, how to walk in Christ. We need wisdom. And so if we don't know how to walk in him, if we do not have wisdom, if we are lacking wisdom, the will of God is that we ask for it. Once again, James 1 and 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that it give... Uh, of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not and it shall be given him verse 6 says but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord and so when we ask let us ask wavering for nothing let us ask let us ask wavering for for absolutely nothing have faith uh, and so if we waver listen it says this right here for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and so in my prayer when I'm asking for wisdom I'm believing that he's going to give it to me because that's his will he does not want us ignorant he does not want us walking blindly he wants us to have godly wisdom I'm not talking about any kind of wisdom I need some godly wisdom some godly counsel and so if we're lacking that in our lives, scripture says we can ask for it. That is a prayer. In asking for wisdom, we must also trust that God is gracious and willing to answer our prayers. All right. So another scripture text that we can take a look at is Mark eleven twenty four. Mark 11, 24, and I'm going to back up to the 23rd. Uh, let's, let's go all the way to the 20th. Let's back up to the 20th. It says, and in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree, which thou curseth, is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, That whatsoever shall, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, And shall not doubt in his heart, But shall believe that those things which, shall, which he saith shall come to pass, He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So we don't doubt that when we pray, and we're asking for the will of God. Uh, I know that a familiar scripture that we give is Romans 8.27, where the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us. For we know not what we ought to pray for. And so the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us in our prayers. I don't know about you, but I definitely uh, rely upon the Lord to lead and guide me in my prayers.
All right. There's another scripture that I like to bring to our attention as we are getting to the meat of specific prayers. Over in 1 Peter, the third chapter. And I want to look at the 12th verse. 1 Peter, third chapter, 12th verse. And it reads as follows, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. So, I am going to pray the will of God. His eyes are over the righteous. Righteous or righteousness means the position in which you are in. You are standing up right. When we pray the things that please God, and we're going to go through those things now. As we begin to pray those things, his eyes are on the righteous. Now he knows the intent of our heart. And so when you pray in sincerity for salvation, for the loss, you are on the side of righteousness. Because why? That is the will of God. It is the will of God that man be saved. Now we have an option. We have an option to accept that his son is Lord and Savior. We have an option to accept that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. We have an option. It is his desire. It is God's will that we believe. It is his desire that we believe. And so when I stand on the side of righteousness, his eyes are upon me and his ears are open to my prayers. Now, once again, how do I know that I'm praying the will of God? All right. We know first off hand that it's his will that we believe in his son. Another area. Pray for the things for which the Bible commands us to pray about. Number one, we are told to pray for our enemies. That's right. We are told to pray for our enemies. Don't talk about them. Don't criticize them. But pray for them. That is not always easy. But we are instructed to. And I don't know about you. But I have learned that if I'm going to quote the word. That all things are going to turn around for my good. Then I need to line up my prayers with the will of God. I need to line up with what he says. So. Matthews the 5th chapter. And the 44th verse. This is the will of God. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So, when you come across somebody who just desires to treat you any kind of way and do any kind of thing to you, it's not them it's the influence of, of the spirit that they're under an ungodly spirit pray for them pray for that pray for them that they are delivered that they no longer operate under that particular spirit don't hate them God doesn't hate us God loves us he hates the sin that we do but he doesn't hate us. He loves us. And so script he's he's instructing us. I'm going to say this again, but I say unto you love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That is instructions on prayer. I know. I know somebody saying, "Wait a minute. You mean to tell me you want me to pray for them?" 
After all they've done for me, you want me to pray for them? That's what Jesus said. Mm hmm Yep, that's what he said. He said pray for them. So we got to do what our Savior says. If we're going to connect ourselves and, and, and recognize him as our Lord and Savior and as, as God as our Father in heaven and the Holy Spirit as our guide, then we have to follow instructions. And, and it's a hard thing. It is definitely a hard thing, but ask him to help you with that hard thing. Because one thing I have learned, there is nothing too hard for God. If you are struggling in that area, I encourage you to, to do this. Say, Lord, I need help with that thing. I need help with it. I don't know if I can forgive them. I don't know. All right. So let's move a little further. So we're going to pray for our enemies. For God to send missionaries. We're going to pray that God sends missionaries out into the world truly the harvest oh there's a big harvest but the laborers are few and so we have to pray for laborers to go out into the vineyards we have to pray for those who uh, are to go out to minister to the lost to the brokenhearted we have to pray for them so let's take a look at Luke, the 10th chapter and the second verse. Luke 10 and 2. And uh, what I will do is, is after the uh, live Bible study, I will go back and, and put these scripture texts along with what we're praying about next to it. And so if you want to come back afterwards, then I could... Uh, uh, you'll be able to get the scripture text for your own study time. All right, so we're going to pray for God to send missionaries. And that's Luke, the 10th chapter, and the second verse. It says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. And so we are to pray for those. We are to pray to the Lord that he would send missionaries, ministers out. We are to pray that. It's not all about uh, the individual who has a call in their life. Listen, you can't catch. You can't get to all. You can't minister to everybody. He has a set people for a set audience at a set time. And we must pray that those individuals who were called, those missionaries who are called to go into foreign countries, who, who are called to go into other nations, we must pray that when they hear the call that they will be obedient. We must pray, Lord, it's a, it's a dying world. So much is going on upon the earth. Pray for those who are supposed to go out to the lost. Pray for the ones who are supposed to go to the believer who has stepped away, who have, who have kind of slid away from the fire. Pray for their reconciliation, that he will send a vessel unto them to remind them of how much God loves them, how much God needs him as a part of his purpose and his plan. And so all roads are going to lead us back to praying the will of God. And as long as we stay in this line, we can't falter. Where we falter at is when we become selfish. And it's me, myself, and I about what I want, about my materialistic gains, about I want to be this, I want to be that, I want this, I want that. That is not the will of God. That is not his will. All right. So we're praying for our enemies. We're praying for missionaries. Here's something else. We are to pray that we do not enter into temptation. Mm -hmm. Pray that you don't enter into temptation. Temptation is going is there. 
Pray that you don't enter into it. Pray that you don't entertain it. That's Matthew's the 26th chapter and the 41st verse. Matthew's 26, 41. Watch, here it is again, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now that's just real. Do not fool yourself. Everybody knows what their temptation is. So does the enemy. He knows what you like, how you like it. He knows how to tempt you. Whether it's in spending money. Uh, whether it is in eating. Whatever it is. He knows your temptation. Alcohol. Drugs. Fornication, adultery, let's just cover it. Let's not sugarcoat it. He knows your temptation. He knows it. Pray. Here it is, Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray. So you got to watch yourself. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Listen. Listen. The enemy knows just what you like. And what he's going to do is he's going to come and he's going to dangle what you like in your face. Yes, he will. And if you're weak, Jesus is instructing, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation, that you don't even entertain it. Don't enter into the temptation. You have a choice. That is the will of God. I'm going to pray the will of God because God don't want me to fall into this temptation. So I got to pray for some strength. Mm -hmm. I got to redirect my thoughts. If gossip is your temptation, don't enter into it. So pray that you do not enter into temptations. All right. Pray for the ministers of the word. I pray that you're getting something out of this tonight. That it is helping us. Because this is what we need. Praying the will of God. We're going to take a look at Colossians 4 and 3. Colossians 4 and 3. This is praying for ministers of the word. We've prayed, demonstrated about praying for the missionaries to go into the harvest. And we need to pray for ministers of the word. That's right. Pray for your leaders. Pray for ministers of the word. Colossians 4 and 3 says, With all, praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. Do you not know that we should pray for the ministers of the word that they would have an opportunity that God would give them an assignment to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? That's right. Praying ye one for another. We are to pray for the ministers of God those vessels, those willing vessels, that they would have an opportunity, a open door to speak the word of God. But sometimes we get so greedy and we want all the open doors. No, the word got to come through me. No, it does not. God chooses whom he will. So begin to pray for ministers. that carry the gospel, that have studied to show themselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth, that they would have an opportunity to share what, what God has given unto them to share. We can't be so greedy 
that we're the only ones ministering. Uh-uh, listen. Take a step back. Sit down. You get fed. You have your season of speaking. God has a season of for somebody else to be the one that's sharing the word. It's not all about you. Have a, a, a spirit of humility and obedience. And, and when you need to stand down, stand down. All right, let's look at the next one. We are to pray for government authorities. That's right. We're supposed to pray for those who are in government. But in our flesh, we, we talk about them quickly and we criticize them so very, very quickly. And uh, we laugh at them and we point out all of their imperfections and, 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 and so forth and so on. But let me tell you something. Um, it takes a, a, a mind to, to comprehend and obtain the laws and, and the decisions that are made. And so we should pray for them that, uh, they receive godly counsel, that those who are, are in their circle, that there is no one there who is, uh, trying to plant seeds of, uh, deception and giving them bad counsel. So we got to pray for them. We have to pray for our president and his cabinet and all those who are surrounding him, our vice president. We have to pray for those who are sitting in the house, the Democrats and the Republicans. We got to pray for our local government, not just in the United States, but all government. This thing takes prayer. So let's take a look at 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter, 1st through the 3rd. 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter, 1st through the 3rd verses. And it reads as follows. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Wait a minute. Let me read that again. I exalt therefore that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. All men. All means all. That means men and women. Don't take that and say, oh, he just said men. I ain't praying for no women that's in authority. That's not what he says. All. Remember, there is neither male nor female. There is no respect of person. When God appoints someone in a place of authority, and that's going all the way down to our households, that's going all the way to principals in schools, superintendents, authority, your head deacon, your head usher, they got some level of authority. Pray for them. It says for kings and for all that are in authority. That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. This is the will of God. When I do this. When I do this right here. When I pray for those who are in government. According to this scripture. I'm actually lining up with 1 Peter 3 and 12 because his eyes are over the righteous I'm standing on the side of righteousness remember righteousness righteous is a position holiness is a character righteousness is my position I'm standing upright I'm standing on the side of the things that please God that reflect his will and when I stand on the side of the things that reflect his will, 
his ears are open to my prayers. All right, let's move on. So we have prayed for our enemies, prayed for missionaries for the harvest, prayed not to enter, enter into temptation. We prayed for ministers of the word, prayed for governments and authorities. Now we want to pray for relief from affliction. Praying for relief from affliction. All right. I am enjoying this. And once again, at the end, I will have time to go back and um, put these things up in the comments. Or if you would like me to just email you directly, I can do that as well. Just uh, make sure that you put your email address in the comments. And I will be more than happy to take these things that we're praying about along with the scripture text. And I will email that to you tonight. All right. So I'm going to stretch myself uh, to do the will of God. All right. So prayer from affliction. Let's take a look at James, the fifth chapter and the 13th verse. Oh, you know what? And, and what's so funny, I, I'm looking at this and I actually have underlined from the 13th through the 16th verse the, the number of times that prayer is mentioned but prayer from affliction James 513 it says is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms and so if we are afflicted we should be praying what does this mean when you are experiencing affliction poverty or distress scripture invites you to seek strength from god through prayer draw near to your mediator jesus christ he will represent you before god make intercession for you and give mercy and grace to help in time of need so Take seriously God's word, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. If we are happy in the Lord, we should express it by singing songs of praise to him. And so if you are facing affliction, poverty, distress, we are invited to pray. That's an invitation to pray. Take a look at Psalms 91, and I'm not going to go there. That's one of my favorite areas of scripture. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Abide means I'm going to live. And as you continue reading that passage of the 91st division of Psalms, you see that God gives an answer because he has set his love upon me. I will answer him. I will honor him. Another area of scripture says, call upon me and I will answer thee. In the time of trouble, call upon me and I will answer me. Answer you. Well, here is the instructions. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. God, I'm going through some hard times. I am distressed. And name the area of, in your life that you are distressed in. One thing about it is you can't hide it from God. He already knows. He is sending an invitation to meet the need. My God. He is sending an invitation. He is inviting us to pray. He said, call upon me and I will answer thee. Call upon him. That is prayer. Name that thing. Put a name to it. I am distressed. If it's your finances. Listen. If it's in your body. If it's in relationships. Whatever it is. Put it in prayer. He's sending an invitation today. There is an invitation of prayer. And it is his will that we pray to him. It is his will that we cover these areas in prayer.
when you don't know what to pray the holy spirit makes intercession for you and by these things that we're sharing with you tonight it outlines some very very pivotal areas it outlines the areas that we need prayer in only you know the area that you need prayer in all right let's go to for healing a fellow believers we're already in the book of James and that is the fifth chapter and the 16th verse it says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much so pray for the healing of fellow believers pray for them we can't come together in congregations of worship and you can pick up and feel and see that your brother and sister in Christ is not feeling well in their body and that there is no compassion moved upon you that you don't begin to pray for them that you don't begin to intercede on their behalf that they are healed that they're no longer uh, held under the captive of whatever that sickness may be now if you can look across the room and see that someone is not feeling well and you're not moved with compassion to pray for them I, I, I need you to go back to the altar I, I need I need you to ask God to help you with that distress because something is wrong something is disconnecting in the spirit Some, something just not right mm -mm. if you can look at your brother and sister in Christ and you're clapping your hands and you're saying hallelujah and you're singing the songs of Zion and you're listening to the word and you don't have compassion about somebody who is sick and you see that they're sick or the Holy Spirit is revealing, revealing unto you that they're not feeling well in their body or they're going through some kind of distress and if you don't have compassion to pray for them I need you to make your way to the altar and I need you to say Lord help me because I have lost my sense of sensibility I have become insensitive to the Holy Spirit I need I, I need you to make that cry and I need you to make it in a hurry because we are our brother's keepers and if he showed it to you it's because he wants you to pray about it all right where God commands prayer, we can pray with confidence that we are praying according to his will. So we've covered quite a few areas. I want to cover some more areas. And I'm thinking that we're probably going to make this uh, into another session for next week. Because there is so much to cover in praying the will of God. Following the example of godly characters in scripture. Paul prayed for the salvation of Israel. So, when we're praying, yes, we're supposed to pray for the lost. We're supposed to pray for the unbeliever. We're supposed to pray for the salvation of Israel. Not just Israel, but there are other countries that they come into the knowledge of the true living God, that they accept God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. So, let's take a look at Romans, the 10th chapter, and the first verse. Romans 10 and 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And how are we saved? Huh? How are we saved? If we go on down... And we're still in the 10th chapters of Romans. And we go on down to the 8th verse. It says, But what saith it? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. 
let me go let me keep going for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and so we should pray for the unbeliever pray for israel pray for africa pray for italy wherever you're being led to pray for whatever nation uh whatever region that you are called to pray for pray don't just pray that they look to god pray that they accept by faith believing that god gave us eternal life and that eternal life is through his son jesus christ that they believe that that they accept it and so pray for salvation if you, it, let's go back to the distress if you're interceding on behalf of someone don't just pray for what they're dealing with but pray for their salvation that they be made whole because sometimes we pray for the distress, the, the illness, uh, the addiction, but we don't pray for their salvation. And we might pray, Lord, free them from that addiction of alcohol or uh, being promiscuous. Or we pray for that, but we don't pray for their salvation. And God wants us to be made whole. And when we accept him... As Lord and Savior, when we accept his son, that eternal life, then that's going to deal with those addictions, those strongholds. But it must begin in salvation. All right. David prayed for mercy and forgiveness when he sinned. Uh-huh. Praying for mercy and forgiveness when they're has been some sin let's take a look at Psalms 51 1 through 2 and I believe that we're going to do one more and then we're going to close off for tonight because there are let me see one two three four there are five more sections into this so we will be doing a part two right now we are in psalms 51 one through two and this is mercy and forgiveness this is praying for mercy and forgiveness have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin if you keep going it says for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me so whenever we have done something that is not pleasing unto god let us pray for mercy and forgiveness take that prayer that david prayed and put your name there and let that become your prayer your supplication before the lord the early church prayed for boldness to witness oh this is getting good we need help we talked about the missionaries we talked about the ministers of god we need boldness to witness some people are kind of shy and you know they get in front of others and they freeze up and they say no i can't stand in front of anybody and and share a word i i i can't do that but the holy spirit is there to help us he is there to help us in our witness. He gives us boldness to do what God desires to be done on the earth. It takes God's boldness to do his will. So let's take a look at Acts, the fourth chapter and the 29th verse. This here is boldness to witness. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. And grant unto thy servants 
that with all boldness they may speak thy word. I'm going on to the 30th because it's getting good. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And so, you need boldness to witness to the lost, to the brokenhearted. You got to have some compassion. We need help by the Holy Spirit to do this. Because going and telling somebody, I know how you feel, that's not going to cut it. Yes, we are supposed to have compassion and he will uh, pair you up with someone that you have had a similar experience. But we can't stop there with, I know how you feel. I need some word. I need to hear some godly counsel. I need to know what to say to this person because only God will know the need that needs to be met. And so I need help from the Holy Spirit. To say what needs to be said. Without his help. I can't say it. Mm -mm. And so if I don't have anything to say. I need to be quiet. Until he gives me something to say. Sometimes it's the, the silence. That needs to be done. So that his presence. Is all that's needed. But I got to have the boldness yet. To be quiet. Not to say something when I don't have anything to say. So we need the help of the Holy Spirit. And so we have to pray for it. Whenever you're going into a situation. Bereavement. Counseling. Whatever it may be. Pray before you go. First of all. Consecrate before you go. So that you can hear. So that you can follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He knows what needs to be done. He's looking for a vessel to do it through. And it's going to take prayer. That's what it's going to take. These prayers are, were according to the will of God. And similar prayers today can be as well. As with Paul in the early church, we should always be praying for the salvation of others. For ourselves, we should pray as David prayed, always aware of our sin and bringing it before God before it hinders our relationship with him and throths our prayers. Amen. Now, if the Lord prolongs his return on next Wednesday for Bible study, we're going to go a little further and we're going to take a look at some prayers that has us in the right motivation. We're going to look at some prayers about um, private prayers and how he rewards us. Uh, prayers for forgiveness towards others. We're going to talk about bitterness, anger, and revenge or hatred. Uh, we're going to talk about conflict with ourselves and with other Christians. We're going to talk about prayer with thanksgiving and the persistence of prayer. And so we have quite a bit to cover. Once again, um, at the end, once I have logged off of tonight's Bible study, I will go back and put what we covered tonight, uh, what the prayer is along with scripture text. If you would like this sent directly to you, just put a comment up in the screen and I will get it over to you. Um, and it, it's not a lot. I know we covered a lot, but uh, I'll have it very simplified. Uh, and so, for instance, I'll have praying for salvation and a scripture text, Romans 10 and 1. So I'll make it very simplified. I encourage you to study. I encourage you to take a look at these scripture texts and seek the Lord your God and continue to pray. Pray the will of God. Stand on the side of righteousness. All right. So let us close out in prayer for tonight. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you in advance for what you have already done. I thank you for your obedience. I thank you for a spirit of humility and that I may walk in obedience. I ask you, Father God, that uh, you will find what I gave, that it was according to your will and not mine. I pray, Lord God, for every individual under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that they will take this word, Lord God, and that they will understand it so that they can apply it to their lives and walk therein I speak a blessing over every individual right now in the mighty name of Jesus meet the need right now you know what they need spiritually and naturally you know where they are Lord God you know where we need to get in you we need to get on the side of righteousness so that your eyes are open unto us and that your ears are open to our prayers Lord God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for revelation. I thank you for the experience of knowledge. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed night, everyone. Remember, stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. We love you. We love you. We love you. Have a blessed night.